to yet another show Carrie Makes Me Host. I'm Matt Bailey, and it is a thrill to be with you, Purple Roads fans. Welcome to the Purple Roads experience. I don't know. I feel like we're a Barney cover band or something. Uh, I love that name. We're here with Carrie, and we are here with Mr. K himself, Kieran Stark. Mr. K, I want to start with you. I am learning so much about your journey. And uh, I know that you DM'd me a uh, couple of weeks ago and yeah. you opened with Barney is such a huge inspiration for you. So tell us about your Purple Road experience. Um, yeah, Barney was, was a huge inspiration for me. I grew up watching it um, for as long as I can remember from the age that I was able to like walk and talk. I would, stay, I would stand in front of the TV and imitate literally every dance move, the voice, the songs from beginning to end, open to close nonstop over and over again, TV shows, home videos, all of those things. So Carrie himself, even when da David Joyner was in the costume, I mimicked them, I feel like to a T. Um, uh, and it was just a huge impact on me. Um, it taught me a lot of the things that I knew growing up because that's all I would watch was that or pretend to be a teacher. Um, but I think that's where I got my love for wanting to help people and my love for music and love for acting and all those things was from watching that show. and. Uh, yeah, it was it, in when I created Mr. K's Clubhouse, it was one of the main inspirations for the show. The reason why we sing and dance um, to help teach those lessons and teaching the message of love and dreaming all came from Barney, of course. So, yeah. I love that. I'll share real quick. A dear friend of mine in college, uh, who is now a, a very prominent director in New York, um, the reason he wanted to get into directing is he went and saw Barney's Big Surprise live and absolutely loved it. Um, was He is such an intelligent, he's more into like theater and Broadway and that kind of thing. So when I told him I was going to work with, with Carrie and do Purple Roads and Barney, he was like, oh my God. I'm like, what? So you do not know, and this Carrie, this gets to you, you know, it, you can't predict the reach of things like this. I mean, did you know when you were doing Barney, that you were inspiring another generation of entertainers? No, no, I, I just knew that we were helping kids, right? We were making kids happy. And that was really the goal and that never really seeing that this was gonna happen, but it's just been so beautiful that it has. And this connection is just incredible. Oh yeah, oh yes. Well, Carrie, let's get into it with the Well, man, I have, to I have to show you, uh, you know. Oh, sure. For a special show like this, I had to wear a very special shirt. So yes, you did. This was actually uh, we had a softball team, and I actually had a Barney softball jersey. Nice. A big old number zero zero. That's I guess awesome. that means he was benched. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was playing the right field, man. What are you talking about? I, I want to point out something that has me so envious, even at my age, because. I, I, even at 27, I can't fit into things I fit into when I was 19 years old. So the fact that you can still fit into all your old Barney stuff. Right. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I haven't worn this in 30 years. <laughs> wow. Well, I was going to make a joke and say he's almost as old as the dinosaurs, but we're not going to get into that. Because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't laugh. I, make jokes I wish I would just as old as his t-shirt is what I wish. Right. <laughs> Oh, Karen, I think you're younger than the t-shirt. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Well, uh, in my mind, I am. Yes. Well, no, I'm saying Kieran, I think, is younger oh, than that t-shirt. Yeah, he, yeah. He is. <laughs> yeah. How old, how old is the t-shirt? That's 30 years. Oh, yeah. I'm 28, so not too far oh, behind. Wow. But yeah. No, 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 no. Well, we go, got great. some fan questions, and that's really what this show is going to be about. It's going to be about taking what the fans are messaging me, messaging Carrie, asking all the time. Uh, and we really didn't have a forum to answer the questions because if Carrie or I tried to answer all the questions that come in, there'd be no Purple Roads episodes. So yeah. it's kind of a <laughs> yin and yang there. So we're gonna start with Lucas Bradley. And by the way, next time when you guys submit these questions, please put YouTube channels, and actually Lucas did, his YouTube channel is the Fairly Odd Gamer. Put YouTube channels, put Twitters, put ads, so that we can make sure to shout you out and make sure all of our fan viewers can, can maybe get together and have a sense of community and they know how to reach you if you're comfortable with sure. it. So now 
question to you, Karen, and Kieran, as a fellow millennial, maybe you can answer this one. Mm -hmm. um, both of you, your thoughts on potential Barney video games. I don't think there were. Were there any computer games? Well, he, Bradley says there was two, and I, I am, to be honest with you, not aware of those. There, oh, really? There was one. Um, it was in the early 90s. Um, I, I never owned it, but I think it was on like Sega or something, maybe. So it was an actual video game um, that you played as Barney. And I, I, there's YouTube videos of it, of people like playing it and things like that. I can't remember the name, um, but there was that one. And then I know a few, maybe it was when the show was still running. So maybe 10 years ago or so, one that I knew of too, was like an app that they had that you could play like little games and things like that as well, like for your phone. I think it was only available on iPhone though at that time. So I never had it, but I knew of that one too. If there was another one, I, I have no idea. Barney Sega Genesis, Barney's hide and seek game. Yep, there right you go. Right there, right there. That's I mean, it. Not very you close to my camera, but there it is. <laughs> wow. Yep. Wow. But uh, my, my opinion of it is I think it's great. <laughs> for sure. Wow. Yeah. Now, Rob Corley has a very smart question. And in all the interviews, Carrie, that I've done for you, that, that, um, that I've done with you. And Kieran, I have an angle on this question for you as well. Um, if you're comfortable with it, we'll get to your question on this in a minute. But sure. I've never thought to ask you this, Carrie. Um, did you ever fill in for David Joyner in the same way that Josh Martin uh, filled in for David when he went to go do some things on the TV show, Josh filled in a few episodes. Do you ever, you ever fill in for him when you weren't on the road? So not on the TV show. Mm -hmm. but I did with appearances I did with photo shoots so those were some of the times I got a call a phone call saying you need to come to the set I, I told you I did the one for people magazine I did a trip to Australia for three weeks that David was supposed to do and something happened and they said Carrie you're going to go to Australia well wow, that's horrible uh, you know <laughs> so, <laughs> so I used to get some of those things too um, and then, you know, as soon as the tour, we kind of became separate entities, but, but mm -hmm. before that, and then, and Rob had put this in the, in the question as well. I don't think I put that part to you, but he right. was asking about uh, Radio City as well, because a lot of, you know, you know, I was the second one up in the, I was, I always call myself the stunt right. burning, mm -hmm. right. But I actually did one, uh, a second act or something for David, something had happened and they said, quickly, get ready. And uh, I did the, I think the first part of the second act on one of those, because I was the understudy as well, which happens in all Broadway shows. And this was the same. Well, then let me ask you this, got two questions off that. Did you ever get to rehearse the main part? And number two, how'd they do the circus switch if there was only one bar? Do you remember so, that? I, yes, I, I absolutely, in rehearsals, you absolutely do that have me mm -hmm. be number one because I have to be prepared prepared and I presume you all figured out as well this is the same situation with the winkster there was mm -hmm. two winksters there was a stunt winkster Ashley and same thing if David went down for whatever reason David Voss Ashley would have jumped in with the winkster um, they would do the circus one I think what happened was David popped in on that time so I think I, I ran up until that part and then David was able to, to get back in as the lead um, but that happened on Bernie's Big Surprise all the time. And the way you do it is you just don't have the, the wardrobe. Right. So the character walks off and then he comes in, in big surprise place with the fiddle. If, mm -hmm. if there wasn't a second person, you'd walk behind the treehouse, they'd hand you the fiddle and you just keep going and you wouldn't wear the hats and all that stuff. So, Interesting. yeah. Wow. Karen, my, my angle for you on this one, and if you don't want to go here, that's fine. I'm not trying to trying to get controversial here, but yeah. I've often thought about, wow, David Joyner, as an entertainer in the 90s, a black man in Barney, really creating that energetic style. Did you ever think about uh, David as somebody who advanced not only children's entertainment, but that anybody, not just, you know, white kids on TV, that, that anybody could really go into children's entertainment? Um, um, so I didn't, 
in, until I was a lot older, I didn't know who was like right. in the classroom and things like that, of course. Oh, sure. Even though I read the, the credits, I never paid attention to it. Um, I think as a general to answer the question of yes, of course, he, you know, he helped move children's entertainment along. He gave kind of Barney what his signature kind of style was after David Voss, right? Being the one mm -hmm. to come in after that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, when I started to develop my show, I looked back and you can almost count on hands how many people of color, um, especially yeah. males were on children's entertainment. And even though he was in a costume, he's one of those people that you have to count, right? Cause he was heavily involved in that. So um, he's deaf, him and then uh, LeVar Burton for Reading Rainbow are mm -hmm. like my number two people that um, I look back to that I remember from my childhood when it was someone who looked like me on the TV, right? Um, mm -hmm. I come from a diverse family, so I never you know, uh, longed to make sure there was somebody that looked like me on TV. I always felt loved anyway, but that was one of the key things for my show is making sure that um, kind of the, 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 the younger kids that look like me have somebody that they can look up to um, and feel included as well, right? Because that's some, sometimes that's what kids need is to see someone that looks like them, see that, and that gives them kind of the courage to say like, hey, I can do this or I can do anything, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, him and LeVar Burton were kind of the two of the biggest things when I'm looking as far as people of color who did children's mm -hmm. entertainment and what they were able to bring and then what I can do in modern times with my show and try to create those same kind of things if that, if that answers the question for me. Oh, it, it certainly does, it certainly does. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things, Carrie, you were there the whole two decades that Barney was really, really popular. What was it like for you going from kind of just, I don't want to say a flaccid dinosaur, just, just, there was no movement and he was just, just boring. But when David came in, when he started going crazy, what was that, you know, with the movements and stuff, what was that like for you in terms of what you had to do with personal appearances? It was exciting. Mm -hmm. It was exciting because it gave me a lot of freedom. Um, I, you know, I mentioned this before in Purple Roads many times that, you know, my mother was a professional dancer, is a professional dancer. And so when he started doing that and they gave me the videos and said, you got to learn this, you know, she was able to tell me, well, what he's doing is this, he's doing a this, he's doing a that. I already had the energy. I was a cross country runner. So physically I was... Uh, what he was doing wasn't going to be very difficult for me, but not hurting myself. You know, what he's doing is very technical. And if you don't land properly, I mean, you can bust an ankle or a knee or any aspects of that, but it really took the character to another level. Right. And then I learned to kind of be able to do both, right? If you go into a hospital room and a, and a child is all excited, then you can do those moves. If the child is scared, then you kind of pull back, right? And you use the, the tail and you use those things. So oh, sure. I went, when, when they went that direction, I felt it was very exciting what he was doing because I was doing the David Voss moves, you know, during the birthday party days before they had hired David. And so all of a sudden they're like, he's on TV and he's doing this. And you're like, okay, yeah. we, we've, we've just changed our game, which I loved. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of... Joiner and stepping in for Joiner. You got to do, uh, you had your own version of Barney and Friends when it came back on air. Take us through that process. You come off the road, you go to the studio. What was it like for you to replace, uh, or not replace, but to step in and, and have your own Barney and Friends TV series? Were you nervous? Were you excited? This comes from Amanda. Yeah, I was very excited. You know, it was interesting. And I, I, I I presume most people know this, but they had really shut down the show mm -hmm. um, is what they had done. And when their new owner came in and, and, and bought Barney, bought Hit Entertainment, they wanted to relaunch it. So I was finishing up uh, Barney's Musical Castle when I got a phone call saying, we'd like you to, to be the lead and take over. We're relaunching Barney and Friends. And, and most people don't know this. They were actually going to call it something else. And then they just, then PBS said, no, no, no. We want this to still be Barney and Friends. So I didn't, I felt like it was a new show in a lot of ways, right? The set was completely different. Um, they brought in some new cast members being, you know, Kyle Nelson came in. Uh, Dean Went was with me, obviously. 
Um, those were all new kids, right? So, so I felt like it was my cast, if that made sense. It was, it was kind of my people. So it wasn't that I was, was stepping in completely, if that makes sense. Obviously I was, mm -hmm. I've been doing Barney for all those years um, and doing a lot of David's moves, but I felt like I was stepping into something that not everyone was watching. There was some, right? Some of the directors were the same. Um, some of the crew was the same. So little of them didn't know who I was. They were just told I was on the road, but they'd never seen the show. So mm -hmm. a little bit of that, you know, can this guy, can this guy hang? But as soon as I started jumping and bell kicking and stuff, they're like, oh, okay, he's, yep. he's going to be fine. So yeah, I had to prove myself a little bit, but I always liked the fact that everything was kind of fresh when I got there. It was, you know, that set was brand new. The studio was brand, everything was brand new. So it was a, it was a fresh place for me to play. Love that. Now, Jalen Cousins says, what was it like working with other Barneys? I know you were involved in training a lot of them. So what was it like working with other people and trying to teach them to do bell kicks? <laughs> uh, it was fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was interesting, right? Going to, uh, to, uh, to work with the guys that were taken after me, Colorful World and all of those. Um, both of them, all of them called me actually and said, can we have lunch? And, you know, they were both, they were all local actors, Rick Starkweather, all of them were local. And so I kind of gave them what it was like to be on the road, what it was going to take, especially the physical part, because you have to really take care of yourself um, to be able to do that night after night. So it, they were all great. They all understood the, the, the heart of Barney, which is the most important thing. Right, you can teach someone how to do a bell kick. You can't teach them to have the heart. And if, if you don't like kids, if you don't love, then it's just not going to work. But you know, remember Sloan Coleman was involved in all that casting, and she, she you know, she had that down to a T. So she knew, you know, how she to find tell. the right people. So it was, it was very. And and Sarah Swartz, you know, I, we don't talk about Sarah Swartz very much. Um, she was, she was in the Barney costume on the tour after me. Mm -hmm. And and very rarely had females done it. And for her to do that, you know, that same thing. It's a lot of pressure, right? You've got to live up and, you know, oh, yeah. whether it's right or wrong, there are people looking at it going, can a girl do this? Mm -hmm. And uh, Sarah's got the heart. She's really sweet. I love her to death. She was, she was an inspiration to a lot of people out on that tour. You know, you go girl. I heard a lot of that stuff. And I just love her to death. She's here in the Dallas area, um, and I've seen her since the Barney days, but she did a great job, and uh, that was really cool that they, they went in that direction. That's awesome. Ooh. 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 Okay, Jakey, you're painting, uh, you're painting Mr. Stinson into a corner. This is not nice of you, um, because now he has to choose some things. Jakey asks, would Carrie rather play Barney on TV or on tour? I will preface this by saying, I know the answer, but I don't know if he wants to share it publicly. And any favorite Purple Rose guests? Um, wow, on, on the, I will share, it, it's really hard because I don't want people to think that I didn't enjoy both aspects because I, mm -hmm. I really did. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm a road dog, I love the road. There is nothing like going in front of, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 people. And, you know, when you put your arms up, you know, you're getting ready to fly an airplane, they all know what to do and they're doing it with you. It's the coolest experience. Now, working on the set was amazing. Um, I, I will tell you my, my favorite moment of doing that was every end of episodes doing I Love You. I felt mm -hmm. like I was directly talking to people. I mean, I would get chills every time the music would play. And uh, it, it's just, there's something really special about that moment. So that was something I really loved, but yeah, I'm, I'm a road guy. When it comes to Purple Roads, this has been just such a blast and talking to everyone. I really talk more because um, all the guests have been amazing, but I'll talk about favorite moments, which is usually when I'm able to talk people into singing. And, uh, uh, you know, one of my favorites was Jonathan Freeman 
um, Jafar when he actually did the voice was was just incredible. Um, we have an episode coming up in January that I, I'm not teasing, but it's just so cool. Uh, a song that he wrote for a show that you all know, and and that is a cool moment. Um, you know, obviously having uh, Matt Vogel on, you have Big Bird, and you have Mickey Mouse with Brett. I those are just really cool. And then, yeah. you know, my Barney family, they really are my family. And anytime I can talk to Bob West or Julie Johnson or Kyle Nelson, Jim Rowley, I mean, they just mean the absolute world to me. So those are just really special as well. Well, I will say, I will take this moment two years into doing Purple Roads that I now feel like the adopted stepchild of the Barney family, because, you know, I'll get Jeff uh, sending me something silly on Facebook or, you know, <laughs> I'll see Bob pop up and like a post somewhere. I feel, you know, you guys, that didn't go away. That welcoming nature and that heart that you talked about earlier didn't go away. And uh, did I understand Carrie right when he was talking to me earlier, Kieran, that he got you to sing in your episode? Uh, yeah, he, he caught me off guard. I had, I couldn't think of how the song started for a second. I had to take a moment to remember it because yeah, it was off guard. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch you off guard at the end of this, but it won't be the uh -huh. same. You'll, okay. see, you'll see what well, we're doing. Hey, Matt, he did it in one take. He did it in one <laughs> take. So that's what's important. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> good. That's the mark of a professional. That's hey, the mark of a professional. Hey, can, I, uh, can I bounce off that question, too, when he, when, when they yeah. act uh, yeah, tour or, you know, like the, the set? And obviously, I can't answer for you. But for me, I am, I'm kind of like you, Carrie, because I enjoy doing the show and creating content to put out for kids to watch at home. Um, but there's a different kind of experience when you get to see those kids one-on-one -on -one and um, interact with them and have them sing your songs back to you and play with them and uh, all of those things. So for me, like with my show, I love doing the show, but I like it more to be able to go out and talk to the kids and sing with them and dance with them and learn what they like or what they dislike and all of those kind of things that you can't get when you're in the studio behind cameras, right? Um, right. So it's a little bit more rewarding when you can see the impact and that you have on people and you can spend that time with those kids because they appreciate it just as much as you do. So Absolutely, which is why I can't wait till he does a fan convention near me uh, so <laughs> yeah. that we can actually go and, and meet the people and I can see for firsthand sure. how people respond to him. And for me too, I'll jump in and I'll answer this because this year, I, I, one of the other things I do is I'm a music journalist. I write articles for a music news website called the music universe and um i traveled a lot to go see shows this year because there were certain places that weren't open certain places that were and those of you who watch life on the purple roads know that we're always recording in advance because i'm always going to be somewhere so i love being on the road and i love knowing that like okay uh one weekend we did a road trip uh down through um virginia through nashville through alabama and then back through kentucky and in almost every state I stopped and we saw a show. So I get a little bit of taste of that road life and it's exhausting and you, your body just wants to give up at the end of it, but there's nothing like it and it's incredibly exhilarating. So I'm with you guys, with you guys. And there's nothing like, in terms of seeing a music artist, there's nothing like traveling to go see someone you know who doesn't come to your region that much. So I can even kind of identify with that. Dominique Brown, here we go, making you choose, Carrie. Were there any Barney kids that you loved working with the most? Yeah, that's a really hard one. That's a really, really, really hard one because I just love them all. I love them all so much. Um, I will say I got close to the ones on Barney's Big Surprise. Um, Courtney Cook and Vanessa Lauren were, mm -hmm. were pretty special. That has a lot to do with the fact that we were we were all doing something, you know, I had been with Barney for five years, but I hadn't toured and we were all learning something and doing something. And, you know, that, that tour was, I mean, it was kind of like the Rolling Stones, right? I mean, the, the, the amount of people and the things that were happening and the celeb, I mean, the celebrities that were showing up was insane. You know, I mean, you're backstage and there's John Travolta and John Bon Jovi and Rosie O'Donnell and you two and, you know, I mean, it was uh, LeVar Burton was at one of our shows. I mean, all of these people you're talking about, I've, I've seen them all. And right. so there was something about those kids were really special. I've stayed close to them. 
which is which is really cool. Um, and then, you know, obviously, I think everyone wants to know about Selena and Demi, and they were amazing. Loved them. Really special. I still see them as Barney kids, though. I know they've done all these other things, but but to me, they, you know, there's a that was a special time. Um, Hayden Tweedy, who was part of that group. Uh, Catherine, same thing. Those, that was I'd like to point movie. out that all the girls that were in cast in the cast with you, and this is the part where Kara, we embarrass Carrie on these <laughs> things. Yeah. I'd like to point out and remind you that all the girls had little crushes on you. Crush. Because because yeah. <laughs> they were, because you have to understand, folks, like to be Barney, you have to be very physically fit. Carrie was still very young while well, doing this. And these girls, and this is, I blame the casting for this. The, the girls were much older than in the first series. So mm -hmm. you had girls who were just started to feel attraction to boys or whatever. And Selena and Demi have both spoken about how they were like, oh my yep. gosh, Barney is gorgeous. So, you know, you have, you have some of that. Did, did any of that ever get to you or did they kind of just keep to themselves? I had, I had no clue. I, 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 <laughs> well, obviously, obviously, I felt like their father, um, <laughs> you know, because I was the, I was definitely the protective one of them. Remember, I'm, right. I'm actually on the set with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot going on, right, with, with crew and the kids are feeling the pressure, you know, and things they wouldn't say to anyone that they might say to me or Jeff or Kyle. And so I felt as sure. a protector to them. And obviously I knew their parents, you know, every day when I got off set, I would go by the classroom, see their parents, see the kids, uh, all of that. I should bring it out. So I've got Christmas cards from Demi and Selena that, that wrote me back in those, those days. And, and, you know, so it was very special. It was very special to me, but the kids were amazing. They were amazing. But, you know, like, like uh, Bernie's big surprise was my first tour, you know, season and eight, seven and eight were my first with PBS. And so I spent a lot of time with those kids as well. Um, and they're, they're all just amazing. All right, we got two more questions here and then I'm gonna put Kieran on the spot. Actually, I'm not gonna let Carrie answer this question because it's another favorite question. I'm gonna ask this to Kieran. Okay. Kieran, what was your favorite Barney episode? This is Mike Lent. This is, sorry, this is Garrett Nix. Carrie, you can answer later, but I think Kieran should start us off. As a viewer, do you have a favorite Barney episode or video? And I'll take it a step further. Now, as a children's entertainment professional, do you have an episode or two that you kind of look to as a reference? Uh, that's hard because, okay, I'll admit something that I haven't told. I, except for my family, no one knows this. I watched Barney from the time that I could recognize TV until Barney went off the air in 2009. In 2009, I was a sophomore maybe a junior in high school so far longer than I probably should have and I was still like acting it out and all of those things hmm. um so it's your inspiration's hard. your inspiration no yeah. no embarrassment there for sure um it's it's hard to choose a favorite because uh I I didn't um I I differ from a lot of fans I like growth and change in things um some of the fans they're just die hard early 90s you know Barney fans um some of them weren't fans so much of like the the riff era is what they call it. But I, I liked all of those things. So um, let's see. I would say Jungle Friends is probably one of my favorites. That was one of the like last recent ones. That was from, I think, season 13. Uh, just because of the, the set that they, it was, oh. for me, it was so long that you've seen such an elaborate set like that on Barney because it, it started to change to just kind of painted backgrounds and things um, mm -hmm. as opposed to how it was in the earlier videos. So having like, such an elaborate set and then, you know, the kids were great, obviously. And the, the I can't think of her name now, but the lady who played Mother Nature was great. Holly, and, Frank, Holly Franklin. Yes, yes, Holly Franklin. Um, so out of the recent ones, that's probably one of my one of my favorites. I'll say in like the the uh like 90s era it's definitely um imagination island for sure um kind of for the same the same reason me you know very pearl being on there and uh just really expanding i think at that point it was kind of a new thing to expand beyond like the schoolyard and things that was like one mm -hmm. of those first movies that where they did something that was different than just inside the school or outside in the yard so to 
have them on like this boat and um you know on this island and all those things is kind of cool so those are probably my probably two of my most favorites um i looked at barney tons of different barney episodes when i did inspiration for my show um yeah. and i have a nine-month-old and a five-year-old daughter so oh, they wow. watch barney all the time now so sometimes i'll occasionally jump back to the ones that i grew up watching when i was younger and then we'll watch tons of you know the park era because they're everywhere now those episodes are um so there's not any specific that i really looked at because all of them had great messages and all of them were written a little bit differently because of the writers or you know things changed over time so i just i would binge watch from beginning to end movies series everything to just kind of get ideas on how did barney tackle this topic and what's a way that i can kind of spin that and make it kind of new in my own in this way so um, I can't name a specific or two for that for that one. I love it. I love it. Uh, Carrie, I think I know what you're going to answer, and I'm going to guess, and we're going to play How Well Does Matt Know Carrie? Okay. Um, I don't know the name of it, but it's the one you did at Universal. I think you're going to say that one. Land of Make Believe. Uh, yeah, I am going to say that one. Land of Make Believe is my favorite. I absolutely love it. I hate to tell you this, Kara, my, my least favorite is Jungle Friends. Yeah. <laughs> That was such on a performance side because it was all plants is what he's talking about. Yeah. And we shot that thing. Oh my goodness. One night, I think we were there till eight, nine, 10 o'clock. And I'm trying to jump over plants and trees and doing those dance moves. I was, I was just delirious. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But we had to stay on a schedule because when you're doing something like that, you got to pull plants, you got to add plants, plants need water. I mean, so mm -hmm. in an interesting, if you see the behind the scenes to the opposite of being in front of it, I can see why people would love that. Yeah. If you actually had to trample through those, <laughs> you might feel different, but sure. it is why I love land, the land to make believe. And that was even harder um, being at SeaWorld, going on that beach, you know, all of those things. It was a very difficult video to, to do, but it, I was given so much freedom. I was given so much freedom to do my thing. And I absolutely, I was like, when can we do another on location shoot? I love this. Uh, <laughs> I, it was cool. I, I actually do love that one as well. Um, yeah, yeah that was another thing, but you know, it's outside of the normal Barney world that you would see. And it's a kind of, a very different experience of what Barney was to me, at least. So, yeah. Um, and it, it, it worked. It worked in a way that I love that we can talk about this. It worked in a way that the criticism of the of the Barney's Great Adventure was that you took Barney out of the fantasy, yeah. um, out of his flat, cartoony world, and when you put him in the real world, it, like it's just it was just too jarring. And and I can understand that criticism, whether I agree with it or not. You know, it, it was certainly a great experiment in how far you could take Barney. Um, but the, the best way I think the team figured out later on is to take Barney out of the studio. You also have to put Barney in a similarly fantasyful, fanciful, fantasy-like world and sure. Land of Make Believe executed that really, really well. 100%, yeah. It, it did, and I think people love, you know, seeing Barney on the beach and parrots and all of those those things you wouldn't usually see Barney doing. Yes, was, you know, was pretty cool. It was fun. It was hard. Uh -huh. It was really hard, but it was a lot of fun. Home stretch here, last one, and then I got something for Kira. Carrie, did you ever watch the show? That's what Mike Lenz wants to know. If after you've done it, did you ever watch yourself back? Uh, not a whole lot. Yeah, I find that with performers. Kieran, do you watch yourself? You'll tape an episode. It airs on Nebraska Public Television. Do you do you watch your show? Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I watch it far too much. And I think it's because I'm so early into it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I'm the one that edits it as well. So I have to watch it multiple times then. And then even though I know what it looks like when I go to submit it to the stations or to YouTube, I have to go watch it again so I can make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, and then I show my daughters my show as well. Um, and my grandma has a daycare. So those kids watch it, family watches it. So I watch it. I think it's more of a critique standpoint to try to see what did I miss? Did I, does everything look as good as I thought it did? Um, so sure. kind of a confirmation kind of thing. But um, yeah, when I, 
I'll tell a secret. So my pilot episode that I that aired in February, it was actually supposed to come out in December of last year. And I when I watched that back, I hated my performance. So I deleted everything and I re-recorded it. So the episode that actually came out is completely different than the initial one. Um, but I think it helped so I can, I was a little bit more comfortable when I did it the second time around and, you know, liked it a little bit more. But yeah, I have to watch it to make sure did I mess up here? Or what can, did I make sure I put everything in the way it's supposed to be? Is the audio right? You know, all of those kind of things. Yeah. Now, well, being a perfectionist is important. You have to. Well, and on my like it. on my show, if I had got something wrong, don't worry. There was three or four people. Oh, that someone's telling me. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I didn't have to watch it. I knew very yeah. quickly. Uh, that's a nice try. <laughs> Let's try that again, Mr. Stinson. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now, on this wonderful list of questions that we have, there's one name missing that I'm sure has a question or two for Carrie. Kira. Is that me? Your turn. Your turn to ask a question. Um, it's so weird because I being like a fanatic, I guess, <laughs> like I know a lot of the the history that has been made available. Um okay, I'll ask two. One, did you ever um like, of course, you came in when the, the park set was built. Um, did you ever want to or wish you had the chance to play on, like, the school and, like, treehouse sets or the house, the Barney's house set, if you know about that one at all? I do. Um, oh, yeah, I know all those. You know, I think I was so happy with the live stuff that I, I was very content. I felt mm -hmm. like, you know, David was doing his, you know, Dave was, David was doing the TV show and I was doing the live stuff. And so I thought we had these really great, you know, I was kind of a live guy and he was the TV show. So I felt really great about that. What happened was after five years of Barney's Big Surprise and Musical Castle, I needed to get off the road. Mm -hmm. I, I physically, mentally had to get off the road. I was living on a tour bus. I was on the road nine months out of the year and I started not being able to sleep properly. And so when they called and said, do you want to come do the new Barney and Friends? I didn't even hesitate. Mm -hmm. I, I was walking on it on because I still had a month of tour left. So I said, well, this is great. I'll be able to kind of, you know, do this out and then I'll be able to slip into this new adventure. So, yeah, I mean, it would have been cool, but I had been on those sets. You know, right. remember, just because you didn't see me in it, I was all my friends were on there. So I used to visit Alan all the time and Los Colinas and I'd, you know, say hi to David and, and have lunch with them. And when I was in town, so, so yeah, I mean, I was excited to, if, if I would have never have done the TV show, I would have probably been disappointed, but the fact that I got to do a little bit of everything and really the only one that got to do that, that was pretty dang cool. For sure. Okay. Actually I have two more. So um, I think I know this next one though, but which costume was your favorite oh it's by far the last one yeah <laughs> yeah the last one they, yeah that 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 was my baby because the, they they were doing it in-house mm -hmm. and literally listening to everything i was saying and and making adjustments they were they were making adjustments i didn't even know they were making adjust oh by the way we've just fixed this oh by the way we've just done this by the way we've just done this Oh, I hear you want to do this. I mean, from the fans. And that's the one, that's the one you were in when you did Larry Rifkin's thing, right? That's yeah. correct. Yeah, that's correct. And I, I'll tell you, that just, it is the most difficult. It's probably the most difficult of all the costumes um, because of the way it's made. You're really in it mm -hmm. um, without giving away too many secrets. I mean, it's like, if you're claustrophobic, you're going to have an issue on this one. It, it, it's hard to get in. Um, I just recently figured out, I'm going to tease some fans here. I just recently figured out how they did that. And mm -hmm. it's, and I did magic and ventriloquism for many years. That's the coolest magic it's trick coolest I've ever trick. seen. How, well, they, how they I figured will, that out. I will tell you when we did the, we did the uh, event a couple of years ago, the Wrangler had never even seen that costume before. And he said, I don't know what to do here. I don't yeah. know how to get you in. And to, you'll everyone will laugh about this, but Dean Wynn had to help me because <laughs> Dean, Dean, Dean was there and he had seen it. And so I actually had Dean uh, help me dress in those situations because the Wrangler didn't even know how that thing worked. 
but cool. once you were in it, it was so fitted for me. It was like a glove. It just completely went on. I knew where all the triggers were. And I, I had, you know, the mouth and all of that was created for me. So it, it was my baby. It was. Yeah, my baby. I, I got it. Only fit me. It's, it, it's one of the only costumes that they made that was only for one performer. The early ones, different people could slip in them. This well, wait, one. wasn't your wasn't your road suit kind of yours and then Josh's was Josh's? There was a little bit because of our heights. Um, right. Height difference, a little bit like that. But in a pinch, he could get in mine and I could get in his. It would be very difficult for anyone to get into this tour, into this TV suit because of the things that they did with it. Yeah, I have to give you, like, you and the people who, who did that one. I wish it was created years sooner um, because, like, just the connected ankles and things just made it a little bit more realistic in a sense, mm -hmm. right? Because you don't see, you know, certain things coming up and things like that that you kind of notice in the older ones, which they were all still great, but... There are people, Kieran, you, your point is right, because there are people in the Barney groups, and I love y'all, but mm -hmm. you can, who can stop on a frame and see yep. Carrie's sock. Yes. And a big surprise. And I sat there for half an hour trying to do happy and you know it's down your foot. And I couldn't do it. Yep. Okay. Like, I don't know how they do it. People are excellent at, at just dissecting everything. Yeah, they they're perfect. Yeah, when they post those pictures, it's like, how do you how did you find that? It's so right. yeah. But that that's my favorite one too. Okay, last one. I don't know if anyone's ever asked you this, but aside from Barney, who is your favorite dinosaur? out of the three, if you have one. Ooh, ooh, that's good, that's good. No one has ever asked me that, so there you go. Yeah, nice. it, it, it would, well, and are you talking about the, the dinosaur or the person affiliated? The, oh, with just, the, just the character. No. Boy, that's, that's really hard. It's really hard because Baby Pop's very special to me. Um, and that has a lot to do with Jeff Ayers. Um, uh, but, and it's the same thing, BJ, because of Kyle Nelson. Mm -hmm. um, those, those two performers are just unbelievable. Unbelievable. But, you know, uh, you know, I, I would probably lean towards Baby Bop. I would probably lean towards Baby Bop. There's something, when, if fans were, if kids were scared of Barney, they were so comfortable with Baby Bop. And yeah. I, I felt like so many times I got in a situation where a kid was about to cry and Baby Bop walked in the room and they went right to like a magnet. So there's that I love them. And, and I, I didn't mean to offend Riff here by any means, but those other two characters are so established. They're so phenomenal from voice to body yeah. actor to the way those costumes were designed that they're pretty special. And I'll add, and I'm not afraid to say this, and I hope this isn't a controversial opinion, but the early BJ masks were terrifying. <laughs> All the like specific angles to them and everything. Yeah, the ang it was angular, his head, his snout was huge. The eyes were like peering into your soul. It was just, he was not soft in the way that, 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 Baby Bop was. I know they were trying to make a brother. Or whatever. By the time you got to Big Surprise, they kind of, you know, they made him a boy, but a but plush, you know. Yeah. Um, but the but the like Radio City, uh, and before, he just constantly looked pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> Why my hair, sissy? Ay ay ay. Sorry, Patty. I'm not trying to imitate you. Anyway, uh, gosh. Well, guys, 40 minutes of some fun Barney history, uh, some fun Barney inspiration with Kieran, Mr. K. Uh, where can people who don't live in Nebraska check out Mr. K's Clubhouse? Um, it is available on YouTube, of course, mm -hmm. under Mr. K's Clubhouse. Um, all the episodes are there. Uh, recently, or this week, actually, it started on DB&A television, right next to the Purple Roads podcast. So... And that's on Roku, on the Roku TV, on the Fire Stick, um, Amazon Fire Stick as well. So you just search DBA television um, and you'll find it. And it's, it's available on there uh, every day alongside Purple Roads. So, and hopefully we'll branch out to more, to more avenues soon. But that's where we are for now.
Uh, All right. Know. Terry gets to do this on the other one, so I'm going to do it on this one. <laughs> I'm Matt Bailey with Carrie Stinson, reminding you to keep your eyes, your ears, and your heart open, and you'll find and maybe journey down your purple road. We will see you next month.